The views and opinions in this program are not those of CESA 7 or Spectrum. Session in room 337 pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 19.85, Prem 1, Prem C, considering employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility. To wit, superintendent's performance evaluation, the board shall reconvene in open session at 6 p.m. pursuant to section 1985, Prem 2, Wisconsin Statutes to consider the balance of the agenda. Second. Andy? Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. 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 Yeah. Okay. I'm just putting my pants. I'm so sweet. He's an older man. So I don't know anybody by the name of Avla. And every person that I talked to right now. Yeah. He um, took, he took the piece of paper. Me? Are you sure it's me? Yep. It's not. Yep. Because I said, he said I saw her on the news and then I called her. So I said it was either Michelle or Miss Nicole. Never talked to me. Okay. Um, I entertain a motion to reconvene in open session. Thank I you. move that the board reconvene in open session pursuant to section 19.85, paren 2, Wisconsin statutes to consider the balance of the agenda. Second. Sandy? McCoy? Here, Michelle. Aye. Becker? Aye. Maloney? Aye. 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 Warren? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Carried 7-0. <coughs> We will uh, convene an open session. First, to ask um, all to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heaven Father. Then I ask Katie to read the mission statement. Certainly. We educate all students to be college, career, and community ready, inspired to succeed in our diverse world. All right. Um, <clears throat> thanks, Katie. You're welcome. First, I'd uh, like to recognize that all seven board members are present. We're also joined at the table to my left by Dr. Michelle Langenfeld, our superintendent, to my far left by Sandy Heller, our board secretary. And we have two intercity student council students who um, are listed as coming. You know. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Jamie Barbian, who's our president from West High School, and Sophia White. Um, so hopefully, they'll be coming shortly. We've changed the order of our agenda, so there may have been some confusion about the new start time um, of our meeting. And um, next is a time for open forum. Um, I don't have anybody that's filled out forms that wants to speak, but I'd just like to um, remind the public that. Uh, at our board meetings, we provide our community with two different opportunities to speak before the board. If you wish to speak during tonight's open forum, you may do so with respect to items that are posted on tonight's agenda or any other matter you wish to share with the board. Please know that Wisconsin's open meeting laws prohibit the board from conducting business on matters brought during this open forum. The board also will permit public participation during agenda items that the Board of Education will be voting on as noted on the board's agenda. During this public participation time, consistent with state and federal laws, board members may engage in dialogue with the speakers. In order that all voices are heard, the board will suspend engagement until all speakers have had a chance to speak. Please keep your comments to five minutes. Uh, and lastly, demonstrations during public comments, such as clapping or cheering in response to either public comments or statements made by board members are prohibited. 
Also, I'd like to remind the public that they um, can view the board agenda and handouts as well as minutes from past meetings by going to our district website at www.gbaps.org, clicking on our district and then board of education on the left. And on the left, you'll find a link to agendas and minutes. And this link will take you to a website called Neptune where all board agendas, minutes, and handouts from board meetings are housed. So at this time, <coughs> uh, is there anyone who would like to speak before the board? Seeing none, we'll move to, um, I'll entertain the motion to, uh, for the minutes. <coughs> so moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Um, we have no communications to place on file, and next is systems report, and that'll be facilitated by Katie Maloney. Thank you, Brenda. We have uh, three action items that were discussed at length at our work sessions. I'll begin with, I move that the charter school contracts as presented be approved. Second. This, we discussed this at length. Mm -hmm. Do, mm -hmm. do board members have any questions? Okay, Sandy? Becker? Aye. Sitnikow? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Dork? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Carried 7-0. I move that the recommendations as well as the open enrollment space availability numbers for the special education programs for the 2019-20 school as presented be approved. Second. Oh, Andrew? So as, as I said last week, I'm, uh, I'm opposed to setting all of the uh, special ed programs uh, availability to zero uh, there's a few reasons for that first of all I think that I, I think that although it might not be exactly equal the we would get some financial reimbursement as we took in the students and I think it would in most cases be uh, balance out to around the cost of uh, I don't think it's a huge financial negative for us to to take on students I realize that other school districts are probably not opening their special education spots but I just think it's the um, I think it's the wrong thing to do and the wrong message to send I think our we need to have our message be that coming into Green Bay is for um, is for everyone I think um, I would be open to some discussion if maybe certain of these programs the addition of a single student would tip the balance much more than others but there are a lot of there are a lot of special ed students that don't receive special ed services a large portion of their day and this action would say any IEP at all you can't come in um, at least you can't come in unless you find a way around the usual rules which happens so I would like some some discussion in a, uh, about about changing this and I'm not I'm not diminishing the work of the staff that said that this would be difficult or these positions are um, hard to fill what I am saying is that if we have if we have students and families that want to come into this district uh, I want to let them come into this district even if even if that's hard to, to do and we're not in a position to be even if we weren't in a position of net loss of enrollment to out of district transfer even if we weren't there I would still not want to exclude uh, people from coming into the district and also we are net negative so it even underlines that what do you mean by net negative well we have net out, outflow right I mean I, I want to do everything we can to bring people into the district or back into the district but underline that for the fact that we're net negative that makes it even even more important mm -hmm. but the the open enrollment if those students want to come back to our district they're in they live in our attendance area 
they're open well, and right, rolling but the out. Net, sure. I mean, of course, getting people who opted out to come back, yes, but if I also, it also helps when people who live elsewhere choose to come in here. Helps in what way besides draining <coughs> finances potentially? I don't, I don't think that it, I, I don't think that it necessarily drains finances. You could occasionally have a, a high, a very high cost kid that comes in, and I would be open for some discussion about which uh, possibly not opening all of the the programs. But we do get we do get money when students come in too. But we only get two thirds of of the uh, state funding for students who open and roll in. Okay. So we're 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 taking students that potentially <clears throat> cost more than average. And by taking open enrollment students in, we are we are only getting two thirds of the funding for those open enrolled students that come in. The the district that they come from keeps a third of the funding. Right, but you start you start from a you start from a higher number, I believe. Twelve thousand. So you start so you're starting from two thirds of a higher number than you are with the. Keep it. Oh, running. Um, well, uh, Michelle, I don't know. I, I think one of the important parts of this discussion that, that and, and I think the money is a very important part um, of the discussion, but even before that, I know for a fact that we have areas of need always for more, more staff, and we may not always be able to deliver what we can with the resources we have. That's the part that concerns me more um, about this because we want to serve each and every child in our attendance area well. And that's our, that should be our first priority. Um, we want to serve all children well. And, and so what, what I have, and I sat and met with John Kasha after the meeting just to try to, and he, he was running some numbers to try to get a greater sense of what this could mean or does mean because the 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 children it's my understanding and I think I asked the last time and I believe it's true you can't say well this student who is an I on an IEP costs less so they can come or this student can't and you can't do that because you're opening the door to all you can't say well you know, well, you may not have as high needs, so you could come. And so you can't discriminate against the children either. And so that's, that's part of, of my angst around this is <coughs> if we are going to serve the children well within, um, it's a, it's, it goes back to capacity. I, I want to be welcoming and open. And right now, I, I, that's my concern. Are you yeah, suggesting it's all or none? I mean, the, the, the last bullet point under number two, uh, in uh, two, space two, setting the spaces, uh, says that each IEP would be reviewed mm -hmm. and the ability to meet all aspects considered in the approval process. Just Wouldn't that be saying that you still have the opportunity to do so, assuming that the IEP isn't going to uh, burden the district uh, inordinately? I, I'd like someone to bring clarity to that who can provide that clarity. Claudia, Claudia please. I, to your point, Ed, um, it's my understanding you can't do that, but I don't, maybe I'm misspeaking, so I don't want us to do that. Um, we set the spaces based on program programs and service levels because you can't just say all students with special needs, not all students with special needs. So the pro, we the seats are set based on the actual numbers of kids we have here and staff we have available. Um, the specialty programs, which tend to be the ones that may cost more, are all they're lumped together. So um, y you can't say students with intellectual disabilities can come, but students with emotional behavioral disabilities right, cannot right. come. So you are correct. <clears throat> and each different program, we added the numbers up and divided it. And for many of them, if you see on the sheet, we're even understaffed for what our current capacity, our current student body is. You said you're understaffed. That's what you just said. Projected, yes. Mm -hmm. Anyone? 
Oh, sorry. I'm thinking. Sorry, Rhonda. And for some of them, it's like one or two students, but for others, it's a lot more than that. And please know that we also do have um, agreements. We're considered the <coughs> hub for students with um, deaf and hard of hearing needs in the in the Brown County area and beyond. So uh, school districts have entered into agreements with us to let the students with deaf and hard of hearing programs or <coughs> disabilities come into our district because many of the other districts do not have the capacity to do that because we don't have a lot of interpreters and we don't have a lot of deaf and hard of hearing teachers in the state of Wisconsin. So we were allowed to do that with the, we got permission from the Department of Public Instruction to, to um, serve as sort of like a CISA serves. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to go on record saying that I personally do not believe that students are ever a drain. I would never use that word to describe any student. Just want to say that right off the bat. Um, I'm hearing that there are definitely concerns with staffing and filling the needs of students coming in. Um, I just, I guess I want to know, because this, this is a really hard vote, it really is. I think it is for everybody sitting here. What is the plan, and I guess maybe what is the reason specifically, do we have it nailed down more of why, and what is the plan moving forward so that we actually are able to accept students and we don't have to cap this off and we don't have to you know, say no to, to students who, need, who have needs because I'm sure we all realize that those needs are not going away and that they're gonna continue to be there. And I never wanna have to think about a student who wants to come into our, our school system, um, you know, in, in that way. So what is the plan and what is the real reason that we, we really have to say no to this? Is there something that we're working on currently to improve upon what's happening? I know there's conversation about the state funding, but I mean, let's be real, that's probably not changing anytime soon. Um, so. Are we looking at something we can do so we don't continuously have to say no because it's it just doesn't feel right at all <clears throat> well so you're I know this this predates your being on the board but we did two years ago we did have space and speech and uh, speech and we did accept students who had speech uh, speech disabilities as their only disability so it, it webs and flows depending on the year we were almost and um, we were close to, in one of the, I don't have it in front of me, but we were only off by like two students in one of the areas. So um, I think it, it webs and flows, but I think you also need to understand that right now we have, I, I wanna say at least 10, if not more, and HR might be able to speak to this more, student or <clears throat> teachers who have emergency licenses people who are um, paras on special assignment trying to get their licenses. So we have very ex extremely un, um, unseasoned people in front of our students currently that would most likely add even more student, uh, unlicensed people, or excuse me, unexperienced people to be in front of our children. and. The kids that are coming to us are have more greater and greater needs. Um, I would not expect that the students that don't have additional needs are going to be the ones that are. Pro when we've had, in I don't know, I, I don't know what else to tell you. Well, you were <coughs> there. There might be plenty of kids who have very, uh, very limited. IEP is that aren't coming here and maybe their whole family isn't coming here because one of them can't. I mean that you don't know. Or do you, I've, you know? I've seen the applications that have come forward in the last three years and there were not speech only kids there were not and I, that's neither here nor there but we I've seen the applications that have come forward. Michelle and Christina. Um, Claudia, as we think forward, and Vicki, welcome. Um, I think one of the one of the pieces that that we continue to work toward, and we talk about it um, when we meet in Thriving Workforce and they're out and about, you know, is that making sure we have the very best in front of our children. So um, we uh, we constantly are looking to leverage, mm -hmm. you know, skilled teachers with teachers who may not um, be on, or may not have a full license um, yet. 
I think one of the opportunities for us is recognizing, and this is a greater conversation that I, I, I'm hopeful at the legislature, I'll be really honest, because it is a statewide problem um, that we don't have teachers, um, particularly special needs teachers, supporting our children Correct. who are presenting um, significant, significant um, needs, and we want to serve all well. So we're, we're in, in an interesting time, I would offer, um, that the state is, is looking together for this. It isn't just something I hear here in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. but, but again, Claudia, I know, and Vicki, maybe you can speak to the fact that, that how you co-locate resources and supports can meet the needs of children, but there's a capacity issue at the end of the day. And I do, <clears throat> the number one, because Minoka does such a, gr a nice job and it's getting known out there, the, that's the number one inquiry we're getting is for people who want to come into our district, into our alternative education program there. And as you all know, we are, we are full there already with our own students. So um, adding a student from somewhere else to our, our program, there wouldn't even be space in the in the building for them to be. May I mm -hmm. respond to Mr. McCall's <coughs> question? Uh, the plan right now is to build capacity with the staff that we have. As Claudia mentioned, we have a lot of unseasoned educators in front of these kids. So her team is coaching them up, adding some extra structure to their classroom practices. Um, in addition, we have the fast forward grant that allows us to help guide and train teach uh, paraprofessionals or other educator support staff in the district who are interested in becoming teachers, guiding them into the high needs areas like special education. So they're actually in the district already, not in the capacity of a teacher, but they have an interest in going into that field so we can help them grow. Uh, our goal would be to, within the next couple of years, build enough capacity so we have strong teachers in all of our special education classrooms. And I, and I want to reiterate that I've increased my staffing every single year for the last three years, um, and not just a little bit, dramatically. And <clears throat> so if I needed to add staff, I, that is not at all the issue about adding additional staff or not having enough money, because we've gone down in the number of special education students, but we've gone up in our staffing because the needs are greater than they've ever been before. So I don't want anybody to walk away thinking this is financial at all. It, there were people who said that it was. And that's why I think some people, we heard that. That's what was discussed. Um, can, I have a couple questions, actually. Um, from a really basic level, do we know why the students that we're talking <coughs> about, why their families, why they're choosing our school district? Why, why are they coming here? Is it because we can provide a service that other districts can't? Is it? What is it? I can tell you from some of the families I've heard from over the years that they're getting pressure from their own district for expulsion unless they try to open enroll here. Yep. Mm -hmm. For expulsion. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What other assets do those students and families bring? I mean, if, if okay, well, it is more expensive to meet the needs of all students, and that's what, all, that's what we're here to do, is meet the needs of every student who comes to our district, to bring them into our community, to lift them up, to provide those services. So what other assets do they bring? I mean, do you see them bringing siblings with them? Do you see them being a part of the community? Can you speak to that at all, Vicki? Uh, the conversations I've had with families seeking to come to our district, it's really about that specific child. Yes, not the rest I, of the family. So you're, we're not seeing the, the rest of the family investing? Not from my experience. From the family. Not either. Do, do, do you actually have any data? I mean, your experience is important, but do we have data that shows that at all, or we're not there yet? No, yeah. Okay, just curious. Well, a lot of people in the last few years, except for narrow exceptions, wouldn't have, would have found out that we're not open and have probably never had the discussion because we're not, it was declared closed. Mm. Can I just add another reason we're seeing an uptick in families applying for special ed, um, open enrollment or families with students who have qualified for special education applying for open enrollment is to, in order to be eligible for the special education voucher, mm -hmm. you have to apply for open enrollment and be rejected by, is it two Claudia or three school districts? <clears throat> that just changed last year. 
so you no longer have to, no longer but in the past to. you did, yes. So we were seeing a, a large uptick, and it would be students who would be from a faraway district that we know mm -hmm. weren't going to come, but they knew Correct. that our numbers were set at zero, mm -hmm. so they would apply so that they could then demonstrate they, that they were eligible for that special needs voucher. Can I ask you a follow-up then? Mm -hmm. If we don't serve these students, who will? Well, they, they were applying for open enrollment for purposes of qualifying then mm -hmm. for a special needs voucher to mm -hmm. go to a private school. Mm -hmm. So their their intent was never to come here. It was to be able to qualify for that voucher to, to go, go for the voucher. To go for the private school. So again, I would say the people who have sincere interest yeah. in here in, in Green Bay would have been more likely to learn that we're, we closed and just not try to come in. So we wouldn't have had the many of those conversations would just never have been had. When I wouldn't expect them to be because why would they why would they call and ask if, if we've said that we're closed? We still have people that apply. <coughs> to can I on it? Sorry. But to Vicky's point, um, so they're you know on the edge of being expelled in one district, now we're saying sorry not sorry here. Um, I kind of wish I didn't know that. So getting back to the, <clears throat> my understanding is that um, there is some financial component to this from the standpoint of if we have, I mean we're tight on your staffing, you showed us that before. So if we have three kids come in with uh, emotional behavior disabilities we have to hire another another teacher to be able to serve those three students because it's like when we have 27 kids and we pop to 28 we have to hire another teacher and we have two classes of 14. I mean that's in my correct head, and most likely the, they're coming with one-to-one -one pairs <coughs> well in, in, that, in my head that's the the um, uh, um, just like we talk about efficiencies with class size but then you'd also be looking at then they would, you know, the you can't just look at the special education need too because many of them might have occupational therapy, which were tight staff, staffed tight there. Meant some of them might have speech therapy, so it it may or may not be just one, you know, because their label is one thing. There's a lot of related services yeah. that might be added to that so too. Yes, I mean, so but you're right. We would potentially be opening cost, another class. We're opening ourselves up to to. Um, increased costs at a time when we're trying to maintain class sizes and all the other things for the students that we have currently um, I mean I know it, you know it's a it's it's a balance and I um, you know want to serve kids too but I I don't want us to get so stretched so thin that we're not even doing justice to the kids that we already have and it sounds like that that's you're working toward capacity to so that we can maybe in the future be able to do that but right now if we add more kids then we're going to we're going to it's going to take us longer to get to capacity in terms of our special education staff correct which is why we do this on an annual basis we are it's right. a difficult vote it's it's a difficult question and, and if i could sandy it's the motion should reflect the 29th or the 2019-20 school year is missing in the motion just that it's and it is it's a capacity issue and it's reviewed every year and, and the idea is to improve capacity but we have to to best serve everyone because it's not fair to take someone in and not be in the best position to serve them well um, I don't know who this first. Rhonda, go ahead. is there a way to I mean, do we have a lot of people right now that are on a wait list or that are calling? Do we have this? Is it in the queue? Is it, are they ready to come in? Do we have this actually happening right now? Open enrollment is, is going on right now. Right. So but are we getting I, requests, I guess, is my question. I don't see them until, I don't see the open enrollment um, special yeah. education ones until mm -hmm. a what later date. February. till February right but I mean do we have year-over-year year trends yeah. where we can anticipate what the numbers would look like of who's tried to open a role yeah, I mean, who's, who's coming in and was caught up in you know as part of this dialogue yes 
I mean, I bet you, because every year we keep records of who's open enrolled and who we accepted and who we denied, so yes. I think for me that would be really helpful to know. It'll, it'll be missing a lot of people who didn't try because they That's read that were yeah, not right. open. So right. it's, it's a yeah, partial, right, right. It's, so it's a feedback incomplete loop. information, but it's, it's something. So, so we are requiring six spaces by January 31st. Mm, right. Before okay. the application process okay. starts. Okay. So Thank we can set zero spaces right now. That's what we can set. You're asking us not even 10. Um, this question, this motion actually contains the <coughs> regular ed and the special ed, correct? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess since there's going to be a divided vote, but I, I'm in support of regular education being open, um, I'm going to... It only speaks to the special ed. Can I say... Am I right, Melissa? It only speaks to special ed in the motion. We don't, you're, not setting space, you're not setting spaces for regular ed. So no. there is no motion for that oh, because you don't okay. need to take action. We don't need right. to take action to say that we mm -hmm. haven't set spaces. Correct. Okay. Right. So it's just My special bad. ed. Mm -hmm. This is special ed. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And to your question about who will serve the students, the home district is obligated to serve the students, and if they're not able to do that, then there are. But if they're being expelled. <laughs> then their home district cannot do that. Yeah. Right, yeah. isn't it? They have to serve some they special still have ed, to they have to special special ed. Ed. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. right. Yep. 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 Yeah. So that's they probably there's so they are the, obligated to there's there's six or seven options. There's some op options there are the options. There's huge I mean the overwhelming <coughs> majority of kids are of course have not done an expellable offense. I think there's a lot of I think I think we're I think we're missing out here, and I would, I would, um, it, to me, it's it's worse to, it's worse to continue to. To, uh, to me, the solution is if more people come in, you hire more staff, and if you're having trouble hiring more staff, then I am. I think it would be a little hypocritical if I wasn't also open to creative solutions to hire staff in the difficult areas I'm open to I'm open to discussions like that I guess I don't want to take up too much more time on a, on a vote that um, isn't going to be a majority but I, I think it's this is a I mean yes yes it's a yes it's a philosophical vote but I also think that with maybe the exception of some categories, I, I really I really think we could do this. We could do this fine. Can I you want to say something? Yeah, I just for for clarification again. I think one of the things, and John, John, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I go back to again the balance of resource and and the importance of wanting to serve all children well. I. I, I, yeah, I'm struggling because I know that, I'm, and I'm hopeful, like I said with the state, I'm hopeful that a year from now, this is a different conversation because the state is looking to invest. It is a statewide under, um, under um, financed um, area of need that each school district across the state of Wisconsin is dealing with from the perspective of being able to 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 accept and, and embrace all children. It, it is problematic. Um, the state has acknowledged it. I think it's one of the top priorities for the legislature right now. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, I look and I say, I, I have grave concerns because I know that that reimbursement rate isn't there, that we continue, I hear it all the time, as to how we can improve and get more teachers in to support our kids. So it's not necessarily as easy as I wish it was. Um, but we're working on it. And I'm hopeful that this conversation is a lot easier next year for people. Mm -hmm. And I think it will be. But I'm hopeful. So. All right, Sandy. Warren? Um, aye. Becker? No. McCoy? 
Sitnikov? No. Maloney? Aye. Shelton? No. Dort? Aye. Carried 4 3. Okay, I move that the entrance age policy 421 and procedures for early admission to four year old kindergarten, kindergarten or first grade, and exemption from five year old kindergarten rule 421R as presented be approved? Second. Sandy? Shelton? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Sitting Aye. Maloney? Aye. I'm sorry. Again? Yeah, sorry. McCoy? Aye. Becker? Aye. And that concludes our report. All right, next is organizational support, and that will be facilitated by Andrew Becker. All right. Um, we have just a few motions under um, human resources. Um, I move that the 2019-2020 school calendar, as presented, be approved. Second. Sandy? McCoy? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Becker? Aye. Warren? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikau? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Carried 7-0. <coughs> Bless. Bless you. Okay. I move that administrator contracts for the 2019-20 and 2020-21 fiscal years as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? Can we, oh. can we have a little discussion on this? You can raise your hand, yeah. Rhonda? Okay. Um, so, much like hopefully looking into improving the evaluation process for the superintendent, I'm interested in improving this process. Um, I know I've asked about it, it's been discussed that it's more efficient to do it in this way, but my personal feeling on this, and I'm speaking for myself, is that I'm interested in doing what's right, what has the most equity and accountability in, in attached to it. Because as it's in the agenda, it's over 100 contracts, I think it's like 112 to 115 contracts in one vote. And while I feel really good about a whole lot of those contracts, I don't on a few, and but as this process is, I have to vote yes or no on all of them, and I think that's, I'd like to think about what we could do in regards to that process. Um, because at the end of the day, I'm interested in what's not just good for 112 and 115 people, I'm interested in what's good for the most people involved. Because attached to all those contracts are thousands of people um, so, so I'm, I'm not sure what that looks like as far as the process goes, but I feel like, you know, I have to approve the money that's attached to them as a board member, and I'm not really interested in just holding my nose kind of voting at this, in this position at all. I think I've made that very clear. Um, so moving forward, I, I'm hopeful that we can actually have a dis even a discussion about it would be great as a board. Um, so I just wanted to say that. And I'm voting no. I think that the time to make changes is not at the final hour. Um, yeah, I've already tried. But to, but to, uh, if you have concerns, to express those concerns. I've expressed them. Okay. Sandy? Becker? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Warren? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Sitnikov? No. Carried 6-1. And then I move that manager, technical, professional, and executive assistant contracts for the 2019-2020 fiscal year as presented be approved. Second. Sandy? <coughs> I have the same concerns with this uh, because there's a lot of contracts in one vote. 
Um, again, I'm hoping we can look into maybe how we can better serve uh, the people who receive from these contracts. Um, and that's not, let me just say this, that's not a reflection of my feeling about anyone. This isn't a personal thing, because that's not my job is to be personal. My job is to look at what makes sense. Um, and again, a lot of contracts in one vote that I have to be accountable for, the money and how it gets out there. Um, and the process itself needs some, I think, some attention, so. I would just like to say that I agree. I mean, at, at this point, I don't see any other way. There isn't any other way to do it. Um, this is the process that we have, but I would like for the board to have a discussion of how that could look moving forward. So I just wanted to go on the record for that. I don't know what that looks like, mm -hmm. but I just wanted to put it out there. Any thoughts about what it might look yeah, like? What I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, I was, yeah, and again, it's not about anybody in particular, any mm -hmm. one person for me. It was just like, wow, this is a lot of people in one yes or no type of. So I actually don't know, and I, I was struggling with that answer because I don't like to bring up a concern without having suggestions of what that looks like moving forward. I don't know, and I need to give it some further thought. Michelle? One of the things we did try to um, address so that any questions or concerns, mm -hmm. um, but we didn't do all of these technical professionals, but we did afford the administrative contracts job descriptions to try to mm -hmm. give more grounding um, if there were any specific concerns for the board. Yeah. Um, and I did appreciate that, Michelle. Yeah, okay, because I, I, I'm trying to figure out what yeah. that would look like. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I don't either. I just thought I would, that's where we Are you thinking perhaps if, if we look back at the, at the the previous ones, if they were broken down by uh, category, principals, assistant principals versus, you know, in, in one group, uh, central office in another group, Groups. support in another group, I mean, is, is that the type of thing that you might be thinking it, of? It's or? not even necessarily about, I don't understand what this person does, because, you know, a year and a half later, I have that information. It's, do I feel, if I feel that there is even one person that I feel I don't want to prove the contract. I don't think it's a good decision to continue. That discussion is kind of, it's like a moot point, really, because I still have to prove, if, if I go ahead and, and I guess it's, it's more about principle and, to me, ethics, principle, and accountability, right? Um, you know, am I okay with 95% of it? Am I just going to swallow the other five? That, but those five, that five percent, I have serious concerns about it. So, I, as a board member who's attached to that ta those tax dollars, I have to say to the public, "Yeah, I, I, I approve that contract," and I have to explain why. And my answer right now, today, would be because there's 112 contracts there. So that's what I had to do. I don't think that's a good answer. I guess I just feel like that's not a reason to vote yes on, on a contract that I think should not should be gone. And I think that is my job as a board member is to have that final say on those tax dollars going to something that I don't believe is in the best interest of the most people involved. More than just, you know, the people in the contracts. It's that that is my job. Okay, and again, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out what that might look like, short yeah. of one at a time, or would, would you would you, you want to look at all of them one at a time in a closed session, or or? Actually, I think that's a great idea. Um, I think just to have a discussion, we literally receive them and we just vote, and we vote on a lot of contracts, a lot of tax dollars with no discussion. And I brought this up last year, because even just that in, in itself is, is not something I feel good about. Even if I was gonna vote on everything, just the fact that we literally are not discussing that, and I know it was said that it's not our job to manage that, but the reality is it is my job to approve that that money attached to it, that's why it's in front of us. So I believe that whatever we could do would be even having a discussion, if there are concerns specifically, having a discussion. 
because right now it is a rubber stamp because I don't really well I, I'd suggest then that perhaps uh, talk about adopting that as a procedure in the future that before mm -hmm. they come to the board meeting that you have an opportunity to address address them in a closed session uh, if they, because yeah. you know just to have, the, have opportunity. the opportunity yeah. then just to, the opportunity yeah you know. that's a good yeah. I mean I think I did try to I did try to do that last year and the vote failed to do that if you recall mm -hmm. it did it was three four um, and I believe you supported that thank you but the, you know I did attempt to do that so we do have to agree on that in order for that to happen one cl closed session you know and uh, uh, taking a first look in in closed session which would be appropriate if someone had a couple of specific contracts that they weren't okay with I think makes um, I think makes sense I think there was um, you know, rather than uh, rather than ha you know trying to, yeah, I, I know what we did last year, and I know where it um, mm -hmm. backfired, and it, it led to a lot of people questioning. Wait a minute, was I the reason you split them up? Where uh, it could be much more precise in in closed session, where we just look at the list. Does anyone have any concerns? Ultimately, there'd have to be open, I mean, voting, final votes are an open session, mm -hmm. but I think that closed session piece would be very beneficial. Well, not only that, it actually says that we're doing our due diligence when it comes to our job. And I think that we need to be doing that. Yes. Maloney? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Becker? Aye. Carried 7 0. <laughs> okay, and then I will, um, I will move the consent items as presented. Second. Sandy? Becker? Aye. Sitnikov? Aye. Maloney? Aye. Dorf? Aye. Shelton? Aye. Warren? Aye. McCoy? Carried 7-0. Our precedent is if there's an ICSC member in the audience and there's a vacant seat, they can come up, right? That's. I don't know that we. No, we've done that. several. We've done several precedent. times. I think we've said that so, several times. I think You've we've said done it. That. Yes. I don't think I was even the one who said it. I think Katie <laughs> said it. Okay. Yes, come up to the table. You can sub in. <laughs> If you would like, Mr. <laughs> Don't let him bully you. <laughs> we, it's been several times, I think. I've done it before. You yeah, have done, done it before. before. I don't you know have that done that a, And I don't know where our reps are tonight. The board, yeah. What? Is it snowing? Is it weather? Yeah. One, two, Done, right, Andrew? So I, um, well, I moved the consent items. And I moved. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, we did. did. Okay. So next we go to um, monitoring reports, although there are none. So unless you have anything, okay. I do not. Um, next is our superintendent's update. <clears throat> Very good. We have a number of things on the on the agenda under this update. First of all, I'd like to begin with the calendar. Um, we are wrapping up January, moving into February. On February 4th, we have our teaching and learning work session meeting right here at 6 o'clock. And again, please note the change in time. At 6 o'clock, we're beginning instead of 5.30. In addition, um, immediately following is the organizational support work session meeting as well, right here in the boardroom in downtown uh, district office building room 331. We, speaking of ICSC, we have a meeting coming up with the Board of Education Administrators at 7 o'clock at the district office on February 7th. 
and then also the regular board meeting on February 18th at 6 o'clock again here in the district office building. So that is our February calendar, and at this time I'd like to invite Associate Superintendent John Magus to come forward and give us a brief update on Washington Middle School. Welcome, John. Thank you, and I'm just going to pass these out. Take one of each. Be great. Make sure Sandy gets one. We could be six or one and seven. Actually, I should probably have one. Well, I'm. I'm what are you saying? Um, so basically, as we discussed last month, we have our mid-year review this week with Washington Middle School. So it's a time for um, folks at Washington to check in more deeply. To review the data, to uh, have a variety of opinions and perspectives at the table related to the work, and that will be shared in the next month's report. So this month's report is basically just a distribution of the AIR report from December, which was a short month as well, with just uh, a couple of weeks before, be between the last report and this one. And the AIR report is, is focused on the instructional coaching that occurred during that time period. There was a stronger focus on the CLT, collaborative learning team work, as well as the behavioral work that was being done at Washington. So the behavioral work was focused largely on uh, some specific interventions related to the highest data points they were seeing, individual intervention with some particular students with hallway behavior, as well as uh, planning and work related to leading a book study on CHAMPS, which is a classroom management piece. So those are, are the basic uh, updates. But again, the, the deeper dive will be in the coming month. And John, that deeper dive will go into the culture and climate piece too. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, I just wanted to state for the record that this was the first time we received this. So we did not have this information on Friday in preparation for the agenda. Does that, is there a reason? It was just part of the, super, part of the superintendent's update that I included it. Um, there wasn't a particular reason, but we can. Okay. Consider no, I mean, I just because this is. I just want it to be known. This is the first time that I mean, I can say I'm looking at it. Um, so I don't even know what to say or mm -hmm. questions to ask because I don't. I don't have a chance to look at it. And there, there was even a question previous as to whether or not we would be presenting this at this particular board meeting. That we might be moving to um, just. Uh, presenting the report rather than a presentation, partly because we wanted to make sure that the principal and others had time for preparation for the mid-year review. It's really important that we go deep with that, but we definitely could uh, share the reports in the update prior so that you'll have a chance to go through. Yeah, I mean, it was on the agenda on Friday, so mm -hmm. it was in there. Um, I just, I, it, it's odd to have something that's so critical and not be able to have any. I would like to have had time to look at this, so if I had questions, sure. I could ask them in, in open session. Sure, and we can make sure that that's part of the protocol for the next. This will be posted, though, right, John, yep. for the public? At, it is now, it, or it will it, be? We will it's make sure it's posted, document. yeah. It's in the public documents. And also the part in blue on the behavior report are some of the new things that occurred this month. Many of the other pieces were things that were continuing from uh, previous month, but we wanted to make sure that it was included as well. Thank you. Thank you. John, quick question as a follow-up, and you have another item here, um, sure. so don't go far. My, my question is, again, when can, so we'll have that full mid-year stoplight report when? Um, well, I know that the, the work takes place with the group on Wednesday, okay. uh, but I'm assuming that there will be some time that they'll need to digest the input that they get. They, mm -hmm. uh, they want to make sure that there's an opportunity to to reflect, to look for patterns, to put the report together, to share, make sure that we're sharing it with administration and staff as well. Okay. Uh, particularly if there were recommendations, we wanted to make sure that they were, that the, uh, that the principal receives them first and that the staff has an opportunity to learn uh, what those reports are. But it, it, um, it from, from what we've reviewed, it, it will be a very uh, intensive process and we'll have an opportunity for looking at the report once it's complete, as well as hearing some of the summer, su summary com conversation as well. So that be our monitoring report then? 
I think we could either bring it as a monitoring report in February or just have it as a standing item related. But, there, but we did talk regular, about could it be there right. second board meeting in right. February. We did talk about two other monitoring reports for February. We talked about a, an update on our wellness work that we've been doing as a district with the new um, the new policy, the new or the new wellness plan, really that we've had in effect this year, as well as a report on bilingual, some changes that we've made in bilingual, and and we'll be continuing with in the um, in a variety of schools next year if 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 approved. And so those are two monitoring reports that will be coming in February. I'd be glad to add that as a separate monitoring report, but perhaps it would stand as a separate item. We looked at having um, Donna um, Worthen from, from AIR as part of that presentation as well, as well as Cindy and Judy, of course. Um, Judy is actually with um, Michelle Jacobson at a, um, there's a planned, collaboration with the University of Wisconsin Green Bay that was planned prior to uh, realizing that that was going to be part of this meeting so they aren't here for, for this item tonight uh, and also the, the uh, IB questions that we had related to math I'm prepared to answer the questions on those but I just wanted to let you know that they're uh, conducting school business right now as well uh, so their absence is related to that. The next item is West High School Mathematics Update. John, if you mm -hmm. would um, update the board and the community. Sure. And so, I know Mr. Becker has <coughs> been working with you on mm -hmm. questions. So as we know, uh, the board presented fairly recently on the International Baccalaureate Program at West High School and actually throughout the district. We have it at Franklin Middle School as well as Chapel Elementary. And uh, there was presentation on where, they, where we have been and where we are currently as an IB program, as well as thinking about what are some of the next steps. And there was a, a, an interest by the board and, and by West High School as well in intensifying what the programming looks like and intensifying the, uh, ma making sure that the number of students that are enrolled and engaged in IB, that we're focusing on using that as a strategy and increasing uh, opportunity for that at West. One of the, uh, one of the strategic actions that, that um, Ms. Jacobson was looking at with her staff was related to some changes in the math structure. The International Baccalaureate Program, the release of the content related to math has been um, ba basically is just occurring now and, and the timeline for, for uh, implementation is, is going to be tight if we're going to be doing it in the fall. Uh, so the, the information is Kind of, we're, we're basically processing it and trying to put it in place as soon as we're hearing uh, so that we can have those things in place. But we're also realizing that we have to take a pause and make sure that we're uh, reflecting and making sure that the alignment of the curriculum is as tight as we want and need it to be and that we're being as logical and strategic in how we're implementing the next steps at, at uh, West related to IB. So basically, we're, we're taking up, we're, we're pausing, and we're setting up some conference call opportunity between our teaching and learning folks and the administration at West, and uh, having additional conversation with the International Baccalaureate um, officials to make sure that if we are going to make the changes that, we, that they're suggesting, that we are uh, well planned in doing so. Mr. Becker uh, had brought up some concerns related to the sequencing and uh, they were really uh, quite valid points and things that we needed to take into to greater account. And that, in addition to some further reflection, um, allowed, allowed us the opportunity to, to realize that we needed a, a bit of a pause, a bit of a time for reflection, and making sure that the next steps for West related to IB are as good as they possibly can be. It was all well intended, however. It was good work, but a, a little fast trying to, trying to move towards vision. Andrew? Uh, I have to really give Noah most of the credit on this one as he was going through his course selection and looked at it. Um, I, That's the Mr. Becker he was talking about. Oh, it was it? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the one with the tie, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think, I think there is, um, I, I think as luck would have it, the first area looked at for expanding IB happened to be happened to be one that IB is completely overhauling, right? The, the, mm -hmm. two, the two classes that will exist next year in the, with the IB title didn't 
exist this year and none of the ones that exist this year will exist next year. We right. have ideas as to what's probably close, but as, as we had discussed, you, you know, probably, obviously, no one wants um, standards. Probably match is not the answer we can give to our our kids this year. I'm, I'm excited about the fact that in the end, if we're able to do both of the both the applications and the analysis math pathway at West that um, students would be able to, would have the highest level mathematics opportunity at West because that course goes beyond, I think we pretty much know it goes beyond Calc BC mm -hmm. to some extent, mm -hmm. which is very impressive, mm -hmm. um, but can't put it together and you know and as I was doing some independent research on this too I would come across things that were just like textbook manufacturers saying we're look we're really sorry this isn't here yet we're working as fast as we can but they only are giving us information piece by piece so it's just something where just something where you're part of a larger program that didn't have didn't have things quite um, ready yet now um, that doesn't mean there wouldn't be any IB math next year, but it might not be all of the IB math that we would. Right. Yeah. I, th I think really where we're at is is we want to, and, and I think you articulated it really well, it's not that, that uh, West was throwing things against the wall and see what's, what was going to stick. This has been an issue with, with the way that the curriculum for math has been released, and there is uh, concern from a variety of schools that they really want to make sure that it's done well. Yeah. And when it's done late, it's hard to make sure that it's well aligned within the course book. Um, had, had Wes chosen yeah. history to be the first area to try to expand more IB, we might not be at this point exactly. because it didn't change for next year. And it's not just a little, right. it's, a, it's a massive split and change in the math mm -hmm. curriculum for IB. Yeah. So I would say it's premature for us to say exactly what will happen based on that reflection. But I think that... Uh, or I know that, that it'll be well structured and that it'll take into account student need and that we will be uh, well informed in doing so moving forward, uh, making sure that it's, it's not going to be anything that's going to have negative effect on students individually or as a group. So I'll, and I'll make sure that we're in, in uh, consultation as well since uh, you've, this has been an area that you've had particular um, time and insight as, as both a, a board member and as a parent. I think you know, having that that uh, dual perspective has been really helpful in this situation and appreciated. And then would we put, would we bring this back onto the, the February cycle then? Because we'll need to get some finality so people can, if there's some people will be redoing their course registrations and so forth. Mm -hmm. I think we will for sure have an update in February. If there were things that were, um, I mean, we were very close to, to something that, that could have worked if we were if, with with certain uh, changes based on what what we had discussed. If there was something that was um, not a major departure from from uh, from that, if it was something that was common ground for all of us, I think that that we would look forward to possibly move, continuing forward with that, but still providing the like I, IB, IBSL apps is yeah. probably pretty close to IBSL mm -hmm. math right now. Right, right, so and the offerings we already have, of course, we want to still keep in place as well. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Our student council passed a resolution statement uh, opposing the removal of the courses that are currently in place. So it's uh, there are a lot of students who will be happy to see if that is how the implementation of the new IB courses happens. That we're not removing algebra two, pre calculus, or AP calculus because a lot of students were pretty bothered by that. So. So thank you for your update on that. Thank you. So those would stay for next year, or uh, we're still not uh, uh, completely there yet? Or I think without having the, the members of the administrative team, they can take in, into account this information, as well as the conference call with the direct information from International Baccalaureate. It would be premature to say what the decision will be made, or what decision will be made. But we always have to take into account what's best for, for our students and what, what uh, of course, the board would like as well. So um, I'd like to say that, uh, I, you know, it would be really difficult for us to say that that would be uh, the case.
but I really want to make sure that we have an opportunity to have that conversation and have that reflection. I know that doesn't put things in a, in a place at the board table for making the decision yet, but I think that we need to make sure that we're allowing time for the choices to be made that will be successful for the students for, in the long run. Okay, and I think in, in the end, um, and maybe this piece, maybe this becomes a piece that happens next year, but I think if, if, we're, if there's going to be a, a change in how we do a curricular area at a school, that, that's probably something that needs to get worked in at the time of doing the course, um, the course, the course book. Um, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to what we come up with for, for West Math. Even I think there's a lot of good things that are mm -hmm. going to happen there, even if, even if some of them are the next academic year instead of the immediately coming yep. one. And I, I agree. I think that the processes in place for new course approval are really mm -hmm. clear and well articulated. But when something is changed or sunset set it, that is not, has not really been as clearly articulated by our department or, or in district policy. So we want to make sure that that is uh, part of what we, we consider as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. All right. Um, the next item I have, I have a couple of success stories. I think one of the things that Vicki started sharing about is a district award, a teacher training and development grant. It's a very important grant, and I know that Kim Shannock and Terry Willems went for it as a quarter of a million dollars. And that's a big grant, um, and they didn't have a lot of time putting that together, but decided that that would be a really important asset for us. It's the Wisconsin Fast Forward Teacher Training Development Grant, and it's from the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development. And it's really intended to assist teachers with certification training and licensure. So the district was awarded a pretty large sum of money. Um, there is some resource in there for someone to administrate it, and I know that's part of it. But um, wanting to, I know that there was, oh, 70 some, I, significant, maybe Vicki, how many Over people? 100. Over 100 wow. people expressed interest, which is great. Um, as we have talked about the teacher pipeline and wanting to make sure to build more so that when we have this conversation next year about needing teachers, we'll have more in, in coming through that pathway. So we're really excited about it, a lot of great interest and in looking forward to that. And I would assume, Vicki, if we could get a report on that sometime in the future, that would be awesome. All right. The other success story is really um, uh, on, focused on one of our employees who is uh, the night custodian at Red Smith, and this came from a parent, and it was sent to the district website. And it came from the parent of Red Smith and said, I just wanted to acknowledge the amazing job that the night custodian at Red Smith, at Red Smith School, I believe his name is Jeff Tonys. He is always so welcoming and friendly when my husband and I drop our kids off for Preble Futures basketball practice. He keeps the hallways and gyms so clean and is always responsive to any needs that arise, spills, locked doors, etc. On my last visit to the school, Jeff saw me sitting on the floor with my laptop and he offered me a chair. Not only did he open a room to get one, he started searching for the most comfortable chair he could find. So just a shout out, thank you, Jeff, she said, um, for your kind spirit, hard work, and dedication to your job. You are amazing. So that's, that's for Jeff. I know we have many, many, many of our building engineers and custodians who so generously support our children and families. Um, and that's very welcoming as we look to customer service and just wanted to share that. Um, the next item has to do with, um, and it's, it, it calls for public comment, so I don't know if you have to read something or. No, I, I want to um, just kind of walk through the facilities um, discussion briefly to make sure and give you an update to make certain. I think hey, you need a motion. We need a motion oh, first. Okay, that's I what I'm that asking. I the administration <laughs> be given the authority to conduct a facilities survey. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. All right. Now we can discuss. Now I can discuss and bring forward. So there is a PowerPoint um, to, to talk briefly and just catch people up to speed. Again, we've had a lot of discussion over these last several years and a lot of public comment, uh, beginning with phase one where we came in and talked about a, a full facility study. 
Uh, we did a community-wide survey. We had many, many meetings. We had a great facilities task force. And then we had 70 plus meetings um, with our community in preparation for the referendum, but got a lot of important data there. Phase two came in, a secondary schools capacity task force and the boundary task force. Two different task forces with community. Um, the boundary task force, I believe, was all community. The secondary task force, I know, had a lot of staff involved, but really collecting their data and their input. Um, and then the third phase coming in is, okay, then what? What does that redesign look like? What would that look like to make sure that we have schools that meet the best needs of our children and, and really support the work that the district and the vision the district is trying to engage in? So again, um, just for your review, these are, Lori, are we sending this out so people can look more deeply? Okay. And they would have live links so you can see just all of the minutes and agendas and all of the background knowledge if, if the community in, in would like to take a deeper dive in what occurred. Because that began before the referendum, I don't recall when we started that process. Within that framework of the facilities, um, we talked about the important part, and this came out of the recommendations for phase one, really looking at saying, you know, you need to look at attendance boundaries at all levels and consider making changes to the overcrowding issues on the east side. Talked about the needs at Baird Elementary, and obviously they're going to be, um, they are being addressed right to now. Talked about the importance of possibly creating a new K-8 on the east side and a new east side high school came out of that committee ensuring all high schools remain vibrant with flexible learning spaces and that enrollments in the schools equal 1,000 students or fewer. Provide every school with community spaces for community partners, social services, and agencies, and we continue to work on that effort. Consin consider the creation of magnet schools to attract students. Ensure the educational spaces are right spaces that are flexible and meet the needs of students. Ensure that schools are, are customized to meet the needs of all the students they serve and expand opportunities in existing schools for students in accordance with market trends. Then phase two came in and uh, obviously the referendum um, projects were determined at that time and the immediate needs and obviously Baird was one of them. Uh, community spaces and additions to a number of our schools and security um, uh, doors secure entrances were put into place and then phase two came in looking primarily at what was going on at our secondary schools um, particularly on the east side and then also looking at boundaries a second or third committee came in to look at the, the boundaries as well the outcome of those um, committees important work and we're grateful to each of them um, talked about the secondary task force talked about boundary changes alternative possible schedules, parking and traffic flow, and then the Boundary Task Force recommendations were focused on reducing popular programs, reproducing, I'm sorry, um, reproducing popular programs, providing transportation, marketing all programs in the district, and using the power of choice across the district, shift feeder patterns at middle and high school, monitor growth on the east side, and maintain socioeconomic diversity. So then we came forward and said, okay, what does that look like if we hone in all of those important recommendations? Because we still have concerns about capacity on the east side and we have a lot of open seats on the west side. How do we make that work? And how do we, to Andrew's point earlier, attract students because the enrollment um, in our community um, and the number of students actually living in our community is, is going down. So what do we do to right size those schools? So we came forward and had a conversation with the board, I believe on December 11th, yep. And we talked about the boundary changes um, and, and we looked at um, the why and got more deeply into a guiding change document, which um, Lori, if you could flip back to that slide, the prior slide. So that if, if, as we look to the why, it really goes into greater detail of what we're seeing, um, not only for the recommendations, but also the, the solutions and possible solutions. 
And so to that end, I think what, what we want to do tonight is make sure we heard what the board said on December 11th at that board retreat and go out and ask the community what they have appetite for. What are they thinking about to make sure that we don't find ourselves creating solutions to problems that we're the only ones that think it's a problem. On the flip side, missing solutions that might be very helpful. So what we heard that night, according to what the notes we had, was that we need to look at boundary changes, but we need to look at them in through these lenses. We need to look to reduce split feeder school patterns. In other words, an elementary school splitting and sending some kids to one middle school and another um, half to another middle school. So to reduce those. But there might be a compelling reason to not do so. So, But the goal is to not increase split feeder patterns. Obviously, we want to reduce them unless there's a real compelling reason that we wouldn't exclude that. Um, no big widespread boundary changes um, was a request of the board. Um, the importance of making them geographical um, in a boundary change so it isn't, we're drawing, I won't go there politically, um, but we won't do geographical um, changes so that made sense. And then consider bilingual as well and how we're delivering those programs and we would consider all programs. Grade reconfiguration. Right now, we're hearing and seeing that the K-8 option is an attractive option for families. Um, and to look more deeply into the K-8 option on the east and west sides, both sides, and to look at possibly, you know, are there possible solutions for the west side where you could um, actually reconfigure and have a K-1-2, a primary school, um, and a 3-5 possible solution as well to create more sections and leverage more resource for students. And then the other option that came out were magnet schools, creating a draw on the west side, and again, K-8 came out of that. At the board retreat, we also heard that Preble could have an addition, but it would not be to address any capacity needs. So it may be special programming, um, different possible needs in that school, maybe community needs. I don't know what they are, but I think that that could be a possible solution for some things they have for need there. And then we also talked very specifically about consolidation only with repurposing. So no shuttering of schools is really my takeaway and how that could be said. So for example, if a small school could be repurposed to provide you know, additional programming that we maybe currently aren't offering or maybe I know there's been, we're, we're out there sitting out there with a Head Start grant um, that we hope to win, you know, if that's a possibility. We've talked a lot about parent education and how in community spaces and um, resource centers and, you know, like the Howe Community Resource Center and so forth. So we're doing a lot of those pieces in our schools, mm -hmm. but a consolidated hub around, around that may be something that our community may have appetite for. Um, so we would ask that as well, if that's still where the board is at. So that's, that's my request tonight, is we'd like to go out now and do a community-wide survey. We'd like to gather interest from our community in, in the ideas that we have been coming forward from the different committees as well as look at even potential referendum projects. Um, as I've been out in schools talking with, with different schools, they, they will talk to us about, about um, maybe a, a gym space that's also the cafeteria that's a tiny space and could they get an addition? I've had that conversation and I think there are and I know at the parent advisory, some other concerns have come up around mm -hmm. existing facilities and asking for you know, some possible additional space and whatnot. So if, if the board would support that, we'd like to ask that question, if there's any future referendum projects that people would like to see. Um, we would, of course, offer the survey in English and Spanish. We would bring all the questions to all of you for review on February 18th, so we aren't going out with anything the board couldn't support or want us to ask. 
and then we would do um, similar communication that we have in the past. We do a press release, postcards to households, education connection, website, social media, and in the Press Gazette. And then also making sure that our equity department um, works with us to, so we reach all of our stakeholder groups. We would offer paper copies of the survey at our district office and in our schools. And we'd like to run the survey through the month of March and then bring it back, the results, to the board in April so that planning could begin in terms of any changes that the board would like to see. Yep. Thank you for these details, Michelle. I just have a question. Um, do you have, I know capacity is limited and the service takes up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Do you have any con or any consideration about the survey in Hmong and Somali? I think that would be an important discussion in uh, Hmong and Somali. Mm -hmm. I know Hmong has well, been a problem in the past. Wasn't that we found that meeting with them and talking with them was more effective than having online. Okay, so they will be, their voice will They're be part of the survey, just not the online. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it would be important. Um, okay. That was our plan. We did that with the background issue. That was with Somali parents at East High School. Yeah, I'm talking to them about that. And you just found that to be, especially when you're dealing with the language barrier, sure. Yeah, just I just wanted to make sure they were their voices being included mm -hmm. since it was a survey. So mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. So does that sound supportive? Are you looking for support? I think that looks good, Michelle. Yeah. We'll go forward with that. Yeah, we have to take I a think vote. you have to this vote. This is a yeah. vote. Any this is a motion. Questions or comments before we vote? What's the motion? To this is um, I repeat. Go ahead. <laughs> That the administration be given the authority to conduct a facility survey. And add second. And add second. Okay. All right. Let's vote. Okay, Sandy. McCoy. Aye. Dork. Aye. Becker. Aye. Warren. Aye. Maloney. Aye. Sitnik. Aye. Shelton. Aye. Carried seven zero. Thank you. The last, the last page or the last slide I have is just to make sure that our public and all of you are aware that we are going to have an open house for our public. Um, on February 19th from 5.30 to 7.30 to um, enjoy and, and the K-12 Fine Arts Pathway beginning at Webster, Washington and the Fine Arts um, renovations, they're complete um, stunning spaces and I believe there's like a bus. A trolley. We're doing a language trolley. Okay. Okay and just move around. Okay. Um, and then Edison Commons Kitchen Edition will be complete by the end of the month. And it is quite spectacular. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. And it will just change how those children will be able to eat and how the food service people will be able to deliver. But it's a beautiful community space and I think it will be really well used on the, on the weekends because it's right by the gyms and they can access that whole area. And then Eisenhower is, is, has taken on a wonderful new life um, with the addition as well. It is pretty extraordinary, and I know the furniture has just gotten in there. Their community space, I, I would hope, you know, we, Lori and I talked earlier today, some of our community spaces are, well, not some, our community spaces that are being put in our schools as a result of the referendum. Uh, People need to enjoy and use them because they are, they're amazing. And so looking forward to having meetings all over the place and bringing community into these wonderful spaces. And there's, there's offices for um, like doctor's office, mental health office, and um, oral health partner's office at Eisenhower. It's gonna be really good. It's beautiful. So anyway, shout out to Mike Stangle and everybody that works with and for and all the all the contractors it's beautiful so i think that's all i have to share thanks thank you um also be, before i forget we, we need to try to schedule um another closed session so if we can just do that now and i'm wondering about <coughs> next monday the 28th Um, Can we have one for February 4th? Or are you trying to do it before then? I mean, we can wait. I mean, I don't mind. I'm waiting. 
February. We have a work session scheduled for February 4th. But we have a closed session. Closed session at 5. We could, we could do it at 5. We could, we could do it then. Right, that's the optional one, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah that's fine. That. That's, that's fine. Weeks. Okay. Why don't we do that? And we can, we're going to schedule it so that we can go back and yes. close. Yes. Okay. We'll do it that Post way. it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's um, the 4th, right before our work session. Okay. So it's the normal okay. closed session time at 5. All right. Um, next is our intercity student council report, and I don't know if either of you are prepared to <laughs> give a report. Okay. All right. Um, next is legislative liaison report. I'll turn that over to Laura McCoy. Thank you, Brenda. Um, first on the agenda is that we have a new state superintendent. Her name is Carolyn Stanford Taylor, and she's the first African American to hold that position in Wisconsin. She was recently quoted as saying that she'll, she will be continuing Tony Eber's agenda of equity with regard to Wisconsin's uh, achievement gap for students of color. She's been an assistant state superintendent since 2001. And before that, she spent two decades in Madison, uh, in the Madison School District as a principal and served as the president of the local teachers union. Her biography notes that she and her siblings were some of the few black students to integrate the schools in her hometown of Mississippi. Um, and she really originally came to Wisconsin to attend UW-Madison, and she will hold her current position until April of 2021. Number two is um, legislative le leadership on the state education committees. Republican Jeremy Thiesfeld um, is returning as chair of the Assembly Education Committee. Our most local politician on the committee is Republican Joel Kitchens of uh, Sturgeon Bay, who will serve as vice chair. Uh, Republican Luther Olson is returning as chair of the Senate Education Committee. Number three is uh, the Blue Ribbon Commission final report. Um, just to refresh everyone's memory, the commission consisted of 16 people, nine legislators, and seven individuals who hold leadership roles in education in Wisconsin. There was a total of 10 public hearings around the state where the panel heard testimony from citizens. Um, you can find the final report and all the supporting papers online at the Legislative Fiscal Bureau's website or WASB's website. Some of the recommendations include drastically including funding for special education, which has not increased in a decade, allowing districts that have high numbers of low-income and bilingual students to count those students as 1.2 full-time equivalents for funding purposes, providing large increases for mental health services, and the restoration of infl um, inflationary increase increases on revenue limits. The committee will be presenting their findings at the State Education Convention this Friday, and Katie and Brenda and I are planning on attending. I'll be presenting. And Michelle will be presenting. Friday, do you have anything? Friday. Do you have anything to add to that, um, Michelle? Did, uh, well, I think it'll be very interesting to watch where it goes, and as long as the document, it's very easy to understand, um, you know, what they're recommending. So, yeah. um, I'm hopeful. I'll say it again. I, the, I'm hearing positive things from both sides of the aisle about about investing in children in public education. It's a good thing. Go ahead. Um, quick question. I was having a conversation with someone today. Who? Um, it was Governor Walker and what legislator, Robin Voss, that commissioned the Blue Boss. Ribbon Commission. It was the two of them, correct? It was Voss. Yeah. I'm not sure about oh, okay. The governor. Okay, but for sure, Robin Boss. Okay, yep, that's Robin what I thought. Boss. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, the last item is uh, the day at the Capitol. Uh, WASB will be sponsoring a day at the Capitol on March 13th. The day includes programming on the next state budget and how it will impact public schools. And we'll also, um, I'm going to be going, um, I'm not sure who all, who all else is going. But uh, we'll be meeting with our local legislators down there. Wednesday. 
And that completes my report. All right, thanks, Laura. Um, next, we have a board member school visits. Okay, I can go first. Okay, go ahead, Ronnie. No, Ronnie, go first. Just, let's just go down the line. Okay. okay. Christina, that means you're first. Okay, awesome. Excited for this. So I have been doing a lot of school visits, which has been great. Uh, I went to MacArthur last week and met with their PTO and their uh, principal and um, got to hear all the great stuff that they're doing. I had lunch at East High School a couple weeks ago with my friend Amanda, who works in food service, so that was really exciting. Um, and then I was over at McAuliffe and Lincoln as well, um, meeting with PTO. Uh, one thing I wanted to share with the group that's really interesting is um, having this conversation with parents about creating a, a like a network, um, like a Google sharing space for them um, on the PTOs, because a lot of the elementary schools are doing similar work. They're talking about fundraising and they're having the same barriers. So, it was that. Um, call off and I was floating this idea and thinking well I'm thinking about this and this mom shot up and she said I've been thinking about the same thing let's do it together so just it's just a way for them to network and share and use resources and not have to reinvent the wheel um, so yeah we have this cool idea and some parents are working on it and I feel good about it so, yeah. um, so I attended the eighth grade mock interviews at Franklin Middle School I was invited to participate in that again did that last year? So did you. I was there too. Yeah. Um, that's easily one of my, probably my most favorite things um, I've been invited to do on, as a board member. Um, I really enjoy that that experience quite a bit. Um, I also went to <clears throat> Tank and visited with a school counselor um, and had a re very, um, very interesting and um, real amazing authentic conversation about uh, what this person is experiencing, what they're seeing, what he uh, feels the needs are, um, and how I can better support that as a board member. So that was a really valuable conversation that I had. I went to NWTC, which is a school, <laughs> uh, for the Martin Luther King events on Saturday and saw some great work by some of our students and teachers. So it was a nice event. I uh, also did the Franklin interview, which is always fun. Um, I attended the Washington Middle School Flood the Hood event, which is very interesting. That was last week. And um, spent some time at Dan's um, observing in a, a literacy, second grade literacy classroom um, uh, her, uh, at Fort Howard. Um, talked with, with Dan. Um, had a really interesting conversation with her about their, they've done a um, very intentional um, uh, work around social emotional um, work with, with kids and, and helping them to understand um, a lot about their emotions and how to help other kids in classrooms and how to be nice to kids and, and all, of, all of those kinds of things. But there's, she said they're starting to realize as they look at their kids that are that are struggling, that that some of the um, challenges they're having are worth with working memory, and so they're really starting to um, hone in on that as a as something to focus in on to see if there are ways that they can help um, children improve improve working memory, because <clears throat> that affects so much of the classroom and their ability to learn and and uh, understand um, routine and and uh, all that kind of stuff. Also spent time at, uh, at Tank. Uh, I got to. I was in probably five or six different classrooms, um, and they're really they're focusing right now on um, equity. So they're doing a book study and um, you know working working on that aspect. Um, and uh, and then the um, I can't remember if I did, did this anyway. I I also um, attended the presentation of the. Um, the phonemic awareness pilots, the two the teachers presented the two pilots that are going on right now. That was interesting to see. Um, I went to the 4K advisory board uh, meeting last week and got an update on all the good work they are doing out there and made my report. But, um, I report to them about what's going on with our board. And then I was at uh, NWTC on Saturday for that event for uh, Martin Luther King Day. Um, I had never been to that before. It's a huge event. I mean, I, um, 
I, I was just kind of blown away by how many people were there. And then um, just, I, I guess I didn't expect, I didn't understand um, how huge it was. And it was just delightful. It was, there's a lot of good um, representation from our district. And I don't know, I enjoyed all of it. <laughs> we did the How Family Dinner Night, too. I forgot about that. Oh, I forgot about that, too. Sorry, Katie. Oh, yeah. Yep. Last week or the week before? No, in December. Okay. It was yeah. Actually, last week. Did you? The African dance. I forgot about that. Yeah. It was really cool. Those yeah. family nights are awesome. And I. Yeah. Yeah, they're fun. They are. Quite the bad, sadly, I haven't been able to, to oh. visit any. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real loser here, everyone's. <laughs> We, we get it. You have you have you have priorities that are more right. pressing right now. Um, I didn't uh, get a whole lot in. I did get a meeting at. Um, I was over at West for a, a meeting um, with Noah and with uh, Michelle Jacobson and with some of the staff there, uh, just to get kind of some of the some of the first um, perceptions of of IB Math and some of the some of the thought process behind it which was um, good good information and I think that um, that was a few weeks ago and just a lot of it since then is just that IB International has not been um, finishing things up on time so great um, I lost my agenda I folded it um, all right, and uh, next is district events. Go ahead. Yes, I, want, I, I want to do a shout out to East High School Jazz Band. They were selected this year to play at the state convention, school board. And so, or school board convention. And so they'll be down there performing on Thursday um, under the direction of Karen Eichen. And they are just an amazing group of students and uh, well deserving. And I'm really Glad to see that um, our, the Green Bay Public Schools is well represented. And I just also wanted to share with the MLK celebration, um, we had a teacher that we honored there on Saturday for her commitment. And uh, I would offer this. The teachers across our district and across the state and across the country have really um, carried on the work and the, the, the values that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stood for. And you hear it in our children and see it in our children and you could see it uh, very clearly on Saturday. But um, I think that the piece, it, it, Elizabeth Mosebi is the teacher award winner of the I Have a Dream um, from, from Edison Middle School. So it was, uh, it was lovely. So anyway, and a lot of our students got awards as well. Give her a shout out for the teacher award. Are you going to say something? I just wanted to say something, and this I meant to say something when we were doing the consent agenda, but sometimes things just move very quickly. But this is the time of year when we receive retirement notifications for several uh, uh, several people who have served our district for many many years and served us mm -hmm. well. And just want to acknowledge that this is a it's a difficult time of year, including our. Jane Marsh, and we've got you for another year, but mm -hmm. I just want to acknowledge that uh, we're going to be losing some good people. All right. Um, then we have our board meetings in February listed, and at this point, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. We, we decided to do it on February 4th for the insurance. For the insurance. Yeah, yeah we're going to post it so we can come back. We got that. But then we also, today, the, the uh, smaller group at oh, the insurance, um, insurance. Yeah. insurance yeah. meeting thought that rather than it's there's enough to it that a separate meeting is warranted as opposed to a uh, putting it in the, the meeting cycle. For right. February. Andrew, Christina, and I met with them already, and it was so our that's recommendation that the rest of you have the opportunity to meet and get the, the information, because there's a lot of information. So as a, a board retreat? So we either do it as a board retreat or, or, or what? We have a meeting um, with uh, several of us uh, on Monday, the 28th, at the um, clock, and it's a meeting. 
Right, but I thought we were I thought we were talking about uh, then the meeting where the board is actually going to hash it out and and vote also should be uh, separate meetings that might be lengthy. We had talked about originally doing it as a board retreat, and then you had mentioned that while well, you already got the information, should the other people be brought up to speed, so that we're right, not sitting I through. I, so I didn't realize that was. Instead, instead of, of the board retreat, so whichever well, that was my. I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I need it. I mean, I think I have certain questions that will determine my vote, but it's a, it's a major issue. So the thought that that would just be part of our March cycle, then. I thought that's what we. Is that where we're at? Is it? The word, right. You're going to bring the the whole topic forward. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Right, it's our recommendation because it yes. was, we spent an hour and a half, two hours hearing yes. all of the, getting all the information. So I would strongly recommend that you, rather than spend two hours presenting and then going into discussion at the work session, if you could get brought up to speed mm -hmm. and then have the discussion at the work session. Can you send something out, Jean? How lo how long will the meeting be? Well, we we used up with, uh, a whole one and a half mm -hmm. hours. We could tear it down a bit, but okay. We needed the one and a half hours. Okay. Can you can you can you start at one thirty, and then I could maybe be I could get there um, about two. I'm going to be late either way, but I can come. Oh. Does, it, does are other people able to come Monday yeah. at two o'clock, uh, the twenty eighth? I can't. No. Okay. Yeah. Just can you either of you? I'm sorry. We, we were Monday, the twenty eighth, at two o'clock. Monday, the twenty eighth, at two yeah. o'clock for for this. For this insurance. Why was uh, I we've already that? we've already oh, done yeah. it. Sorry, Rhonda. Can you? Rhonda. We're not to one. <laughs> what happened to what one? one? Did one? How did one become two? One became two because I have a meeting from one to two, but okay. I've, well, I can probably be brought up to speed at another time. I think so. Okay. So go back to one then if Rhonda can get yeah. there at one. Am I the only person requesting one? Well, you're the, you're the only person. Ed and Ed, Laura. Are, Ed, are you? Okay. So Ed and Rhonda can come. And Maybe Laura, Laura and I can, can be brought up to speed at a, with you at another time. Okay. We'll talk okay, to so you. you and Ed can do it. Okay. Does that okay. work? And then we got everybody it's covered. Material. Okay. We just thought we'd recommend that you All right. have that. Mm -hmm. We'll post it um, as we did this meeting. Right. Yeah. As okay. As right. Okay. Thank you for right. remembering that, Andrew. All right. Thanks, Andrew. All right. Anything else for the good of the order? Otherwise, now I will entertain a motion for so adjournment. Moved. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. You have been watching the Green Bay Area Public School District's Board of Education meeting. Please visit the school district's website, www.gbaps.org, to view the program again. If you cannot fully access the information on this video, please let us know the accessibility issue you are having by calling 920 448 2025 or by email at communications at gbaps.org. We will try to provide the information to you in an alternative format and or make the necessary improvements to make the information accessible.